This episode is brought to you in part by Masterworks. All right, well, here's the deal. I have a metal detector that uh, I've hardly used, which is lame, but I like the idea of metal detecting. As a matter of fact, there are a couple of YouTube channels that I watch, uh, like Iron Mike's Metal Detecting and Digging on Faith, and there are several others that uh, you know focus on uh, extracting artifacts from the ground and, and kind of bringing this history to the surface. And I've always thought that like the the dream place to do some metal detecting would be the area of Normandy. Well, today uh, that dream is going to become a reality. We, we've got a guy who uh, does quite a bit of metal detecting around here, has really found some amazing things, and is going to be taking us to one of his spots today. Well, if you have been to the website of the Gettysburg Museum of History and have bought one of the D-Day relics, well, there's a good chance that it was this guy right here who dug it up for you. Uh, this is Jean Sebastian, and he is a, uh, he's a young guy, but he is a well-seasoned, uh, what do you call a metal detector person, a metal detectorist? Yeah. I don't know, okay, a metal detectorist. Uh, so anyway, he has agreed to bring us uh, to one of his spots. I do need to mention one thing. It is illegal to metal detect on the beaches of Normandy and on a public area. Oh, we've got a hit. Uh, but this is a, a private area uh, in the Normandy region. Of course, we can't say where we are because, well, we don't want trespassers to come here. Anyway, we're going to do some digging and, and see what we can extract uh, from the soil here. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, junk? U.S. parts. U.S. parts? Yes. Is that what it says? You tell what that is, Eric? I'm not really sure. Have to clean it up a little bit more. Okay. That's well, something. It's something. All right, there's our first hit. <laughs> What'd you find? Oh, is that a shell casing? Yeah. Looks like M1 Grand. Wow. What is that? A new yeet. <laughs> oh, it's a grommet from like a tent or something. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, now, uh, I mentioned earlier that it is illegal to metal detect on the beach. So uh, before any, uh, you know, YouTube professionals look and see that we're in sand, uh, I want you to notice, okay, this is sand. This is a pond. Sand, pond, not an ocean. All right, so we're not metal detecting on the beach. This is kind of in the, the Utah beach area. Okay, so this is in the sector that like the, the 4th Infantry Division would have come in on during D-Day. Uh-oh, look. Oh, I thought we had another hit. False alarm. Well, let me just tell you about how much I dislike Eric Dorr right now. He's just <laughs> walking along and finds this chunk of a German ammo crate. It's for uh, Mauser ammunition. You can see the dovetail or whatever you call that joiner there, but 
it was uh, right on the surface. There's a nail there. So, uh, yeah, right on the surface. Hmm. Maybe maybe uh, you should take the camera, and uh, I can actually <laughs> look around for some stuff. Okay. <laughs> this is bull crap. <laughs> John Sebastian, what what is the the best thing you've ever found? Mm, helmet. Helmet. Was that the uh, 101st Airborne helmet? Uh, sounds like <laughs> 505. Yes, 505. He found an M2 505th painted helmet. Uh oh, he found something else here. Yeah. Something big. German. Oh. oh. What is it? Meskit. Uh, no, Gemmel. Uh, yeah, Meskit. Yeah. yeah. Mes him. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude. And right away he knows what it is. German. Now, how can you tell? Which All right, we're gonna clean this thing up. Take a look at it. This is why it's good to metal detect around a pond so you can immediately clean it up. Look at that. Okay, this is actually crazy. We haven't even been out here, what, 15 minutes? Not even. 15 minutes, we've already found uh, a, a .30-06 spent shell casing, uh, some other stuff. Uh, Eric Mystery found metal. his his dad gum board, and <laughs> and now we have a German mess kit. That is awesome. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Oh, it's another one. Look at that. Yeah, looks like uh, we have another mess kit or mess tin with a name in it. Oh, wait a minute. We got some more stuff. <laughs> the top part. Yeah. It's dead. <laughs> Here's the piece that we just pulled out of the hole, and by we, I mean Jean Sebastian. Uh, and it looks like there might be like a name or a number carved in there. And we'll have to clean that up a little better. What is that? Oh, that's a, it's oh, is the, that handle, the handle. Handle from the the uh, top part. Okay, this guy just keeps finding stuff. Ah. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, that's the bag for the um, weapons, the waterproof bags. Oh, well, he's yeah. Man, look at this guy. Even find stuff that isn't metal. All right, well, obviously uh, it's about the end of the day here. Uh, we're running out of light. I'm running out of battery. So we're going to do a quick roundup of everything that we found this evening. Hey, wanted to jump away from the video for just a minute to tell you about something that I have found exceptionally intriguing. Now, everybody knows that historic artifacts gain value over time. And something else that has historically gained value over time is art. Now, whenever I think of fine art, I think dollar signs. 
So collecting art pieces is really kind of cost prohibitive for someone like me. This is really kind of a, a billionaire's game. But Masterworks.io has emerged as the only platform that is taking billionaire art collectors head on and allowing people like us to access their exclusive investments. Simply put, you can now invest in the very same art that they do uh, with names like Banksy and Monet and other classic artists. Uh, you can get in for just a fraction of what they pay to purchase these works of art. Uh, really, art is a great investment. Contemporary art prices outpaced the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021. That really is incredible. Getting started with Masterworks is super easy. It just takes a few clicks. You visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and you can start diversifying your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around. If you don't want to wait until they find a buyer, well, Masterworks offers a secondary market on their website where you can just sell your shares to another member, similar to how you would sell stock on an app like Robinhood. The stock market has been really crazy recently. In fact, nearly every top equity firm is projecting real returns of 5% or less. Uh, some are even predicting negative growth. So you're going to need to really diversify your portfolio and investing in art is really a, a great option to consider. You can gain priority access by clicking the link in the description and it really helps to support the channel. So go check it out. Okay, well, uh, so here's the deal. Um, last night, basically ran out of camera light, and uh, I'm also an idiot, and my battery died, and I didn't have a backup. So, didn't get to show uh, all of the stuff that we pulled out of the ground last night, so I thought we'd pull it out this morning and uh, show what came out of the ground here in Normandy. All right, so here are a few of the items that we pulled out of the ground yesterday evening, uh, cleaned up a little bit. So here's this German mess tin, and now that it's cleaned up a little bit, you can see the initials, looks like WA on there. So that, that's kind of cool that it's personalized. And then this is the, the lid that would go on top of that, and it looks like there might be some initials carved in there as well. Maybe like an R. H, possibly. Uh, this is a piece of American gear, and I'm not 100% positive what that is, to be honest with you. And then some sort of hook or latch. Found a, another mess tin. Now this one is a little bit more uh, worse for the wear, but has this uh, handle still attached here which is pretty cool. We also have our spent shell casing, uh, some sort of little washer thing. I don't really know what these are. So this is kind of a mystery at the moment, but we found two of them. And then also found this magazine. pretty interesting and uh, just because our digger is such a nice guy we didn't find this last night but this is something that he found at another time this is a piece of parachute all right well there you go uh, those are just a few of the items that for sure were used by some German guy here in Normandy uh, in June of 1944. I, I have to say, I, I love relics. Uh, and to be able to come to Normandy and do some metal detecting and pull some of these relics out of the ground and know that the last time that it saw daylight was in 1944. Ah, pretty cool experience. All right. We're off to the next place. Okay, so I'm uh, legitimately terrible at this, I think.
All right, got a signal. Okay, somebody has to run the camera, so uh, Jean-Philippe's gonna do the digging. He, he gets to do the manual labor. Go ahead and pull my MG42 out of the ground here. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I got a piece of trash. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. I just called. I just called uh, Jean Sebastian uh, Jean Philippe. So yeah, sorry. No <laughs> problem. At least I got the Jean part right. <laughs> <laughs>